Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, October 15th, 2020, and this is the week in charts. I'm sure I thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I have quite a bit to say about that when we get through the slides. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides themselves just to keep me from getting uh, letting my ADD kick in. And when we get the live charts, if you have any questions about anything that wasn't covered, feel free to ask then. Your favorite stock picks. Also, if you don't mind, wait till we get to the live charts. And when we do, ask about one stock pick at a time. And that's all for your benefit, by the way. So we're going to focus on, well, I want to continue my solving your trading problems. I've, I've got quite a few in a spreadsheet that I downloaded from my CRM system. I put a little silly banner ad out, which I'll show you the little market wizard guy here in just one second. Ed, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't, um, like, water went down the wrong way. Come on, Kenneth Barker. Anyway, solving your trading problems. I've got a whole list of trading problems to solve. And in going through a lot of them, it made me think, well, you know, let's kind of get back to the basics a little bit on some of these. And a lot of that can really solve your problems. So we're going to do a little bit of that. We're going to solve some of the problems. And then we're going to go back to the basics a little bit on solving those problems. And the point I'm trying to make is that usually you can boil these down to something fairly simple and just do it. I know it's easier said than done. And in doing all this, I kind of backed into something that possibly the one setup that might solve all your problems, at least in some particular cases. And that is, of course, only if you want your problem solved. And all of that makes sense in a minute or two. There's a claim screen, as you know, you can lose money trading, or as all to sum it up, barring a line from my buddy Greg Morse. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I had a quick question that was up under the problems. I just want to bang this out real quick. I'm looking for your GC2000 scanners to run every day slash week to find positions for entries that I could validate against my trading system rules. Okay, well, if you go under the members areas area and you click on members resources in the dashboard, you can download my scans and you could also download a sample spreadsheet to track your trades. And that'll have the it's a it's the same exact spreadsheet I use in the model portfolio, except it's blank. You would just put your symbols in and your entries and your exits, and it automatically, or just put your entry you stop in, and it'll calculate automatically your initial profit target and the amount of shares you should be trading. So in solving your trading problems before they occur, one thing, as I've been saying ad nauseum, I would recommend you go through the members courses, and I have a lot to say about this toward the end of the presentation. And as you'll see throughout tonight's presentation, I'm going to talk a lot about how money management and the psychology and the methodology are intertwined. And as I often say, it's like a three-stranded cord. If you get better at one, you get better at all. If you understand the money management and you're risking a small amount of money, then you're not as stressed out about your trade. So that's the trading psychology. And if you are following the methodology, and you get a few winners because you're getting better and better and better at picking stocks. And then a sneaker comes along, you A, recognize what a sneaker is, and B, you're willing to kick it out of your portfolio, which takes psychology to be able to follow the money management to accept that loss. Anyway, it goes on and on and on as far, or I could go on and on and on as far as the three being interrelated. And the other thing too, as I've been saying ad nauseum, when I set up this learning management system, I was suggest it was suggested that I divide things into three categories. And I said, that's easy. Mindset, money management, methodology. Then I realized there was a lot of things that kind of was a little bit of everything. And based on the feedback, and I got a lot of feedback last week from you guys on holistic trader. The holistic, holistic trader is a little bit of all three of those that don't fit necessarily into one category. And that kind of and I think ties it all together. Anyway, by the way, these questions and problems, most of them have been covered or a lot of them have been covered under the Q&A sessions. And I keep 
threatening to do a new session, but most of the questions, at least the live questions, have been covered in the Facebook group, and you guys have helped me out a lot with that, and girls, so I appreciate that. But do look, if you complete all the courses, a lot of the holes are filled in, like what's an opening gap reversal, should I trade options, and a lot of other questions have been answered on the back end. So very proud of that, and it's been a great way for me to sort of fill in the holes for anything that's missing from the members area. And I'm gonna come back to that toward the end of the presentation. Now to recap, as I said last week, virtually all big trading mistakes and problems can be boiled down to simple rookie mistakes. And the pros are not immune to making them. In fact, pros sometimes make them in a really big way. And this is especially true in a lot of cases for people who should know better. And I don't wanna be shot in Friday, which means to take pleasure and someone else's pain, because I'm not, believe me, I'm going through enough pain of my own when I go through these drawdowns, as I happen to be going through one right now. As I often say, as a trend follower, you spend a lot of your time less wealthy. But anyway, by the people I mean should go should know better, last week and then many times, not to pick on the poor guy, but just to point out that these people that should know better are making these very simple mistakes like Mr. Ackman who lost $1 billion, B with a B, in one stock. And he did that by fighting the trend. He actually bought with the trend, I don't know how much he bought, but I'm guessing that it was, it was a decent move, higher, like 20%, maybe more. And if he'd have held on through that move and then sold out when he started fighting the trend or right before he started fighting the trend too much, stopped out, right? He would actually made millions and millions of dollars instead of fighting the trend and selling out near the lows and losing a billion dollars. And this year has been, is it replete with examples or, or there, there's been a lot of examples this year of hedge funds getting on CNBC or whatever and say, people are dying. Well, people are dying, unfortunately, right? But the market doesn't seem to care. And our job is to not focus on what's happening our job is to focus on what is 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 the market going up is the market going down is the market going sideways is the stock that you're trading going up going down or sideways there's another hedge fund manager and he wrote a book which i really didn't really enjoyed and i'm not going to throw him under the bus but you can probably figure out who it is and based on his book, it sounds like he, when problems occur, he would come up with a procedure for dealing with those problems. So the next time that problem occurs, like, oh, I have another one of those. And that's been in the back of my mind for a long time, especially when I hit a drawdown. I'm like, is this another one of those type of problems? Do I have a procedure in place or should I have a procedure in place? And I think that's real important. I think it's important for life too. Um, not to bore you with an example, but I did the programming on my website five years ago or however many years ago, especially for like the learning management system. Well, when I get around to fixing something or whatever, I don't remember what I did. If I had a procedure where I would write that down and document it, maybe I'd know what I did and when I did it. So getting back to trading, when you make a mistake, figure out what the mistake is, figure out a way to fix it. And then if you go to make that mistake again, like I said last week, a mistake made twice is a choice. I know, I, I need I need tough love myself. But at least you'll recognize that hopefully ahead of time. Now, you have to ask yourself, is it a mind problem? In other words, trade psychology, a money management problem, or a methodology issue? And the correct answer is yes. It's one of those three, and as I said earlier, likely some combination thereof because they're all intertwined. Hi, Dave. Thanks for all your work with a healthy dose of humor. You're welcome. It is a good thing. I'm a bit impulsive with jumping into some charts, moving like a Saturn rocket launch. So after waiting too long, I get frustrated and buy a few shares, not wanting to wait for consolidation, which might come 30% higher. Exclamation point. Promptly after I get a few shares, price starts dropping back a bit. I'm not using stops because I insist they keep going up. Yikes. Thank you. 
Well, it sounds like Jay is already admitting some of his guilt. And if he doesn't see some of the other things in here that kind of stand out to me, it's like, okay, well, he's a bit impulsive as in his words. So that would be trading psychology. <laughs> it reminds me, George Carlin said, you know, when they, like, you know, in the witness stands, like, in your own words, tell us what happened. It's like, <laughs> It'd be fun to get up there and go, anyway, hope that made sense. But in his words, he's a bit impulsive. So that's that has a hint, obviously, of trading psychology. He's jumping into some charts moving like a Saturn rocket. Well, what is that? Well, that is partially a methodology issue and obviously a little bit of a psychology issue or lack thereof. So if he's just jumping in midstream without some sort of setup, he doesn't have a methodology, or if he does, from a trading psychology standpoint, he's throwing that methodology out the window. So after waiting too long, I get frustrated and buy a few shares. Well, what is that? Well, that sounds like that's trading psychology. Again, rearing its ugly head, something known as FOMO, fear of missing out. And then he goes on to say, I'm not using stops. Well, what is that? Money management? because I insist they keep going up. So that's money management, not using stops, or lack thereof, because he's imposing his will onto the market, that word insist being the key word in that sentence. So that brings us back to trading psychology. As I often say, and as I'll reiterate toward the end of this presentation, the problems, or the good news, I should say, involving these problems is that you know what you're doing wrong. And Jay here, if he would just sort of unpack this a little bit, word by word, I insist they keep going up. What is he doing? He's trying to impose his will again upon the market. He can't stand it when the stock just keeps going up without him. So what does he do? He jumps in midstream. He knows what he's doing wrong. Roy Longstreet wrote a really good book. It's called Viewpoints of a Commodity Trader. I gave my copy away and then I bitched because I didn't realize it was a rare book. <laughs> and Mike P, I don't know if he's here tonight. He got tired of me bitching, so he... He's in the Facebook group. He went ahead and, and found me a, a new edition of it and sent it to me, which I immediately started market up in the uh, ear market and everything. But anyway, it's a good little book called Viewpoints of a Commodity Trader. If you watch a recording of this, daylander.com slash books dash two dash three, a link will pop up and you can check that out. And I would encourage you get the book, not the rare version, but see if you can get a reprint. The deeper secret for the trader is his ability to subordinate his own will to the will of the market. I read a quote recently, and I think it's it's either from Douglas or I can't remember who, and I, I want to give him credit, and I'll give him credit next week. But basically... You can't worry about what the market is going to do. You have to worry about what you're going to do and not so much. Don't worry as much about predicting everything, but worry that you'll be able to sort of flow with the tide when whatever happens, happens. And that'll make a lot more sense once I get the actual quote out. Now, that viewpoints was written probably 70 years ago or 60 years ago or at least 50, The Psychology of the Stock Market by G.C. Selden, I think was written before the Great Depression. So I think it was written in the early 1900s. And this is a book, it's about that big. Yeah, and you could actually get it free on the internet, I think, because it's been out so long. But I would just go ahead and spring for a real copy and get it off my website if you don't mind. And he said, few persons are so introspective as to be able to tell where this bias in favor of their own interests begins 
and where it leaves off. Still fewer bother to make the effort to tell. So Jay insists that the stock goes higher as opposed to subordinating his will onto the markets. If you are long or short of the market, you are not an unprejudiced judge and you will be greatly tempted to put such an interpretation upon current events as will coincide with your perceived opinion. What did we talk about a couple of weeks ago in the week of charts? We talked about perception. And if you're long or short or market, you're not an unprejudiced judge. You think it should do a certain thing. And rarely does a market do what you want it to do, at least on your time frame, and certainly not all the time, as I said a few minutes ago. And I, I got the term from the Kelly formula, because if you use the Kelly formula, which I'm actually going to touch upon in just one second, you will spend a lot of times less wealthy. If you're a trend follower, you're going to spend a lot of time, you're going to spend a lot of your time less wealthy. And that's one of the pitfalls of trend following. But here's the deal. The only way to make money is to capture a trend. But Dave, what if you're a contra trend trader? Well, when you get in that market, it better reverse and it better trend in the opposite direction soon. Now, for dealing with the FOMO thing, realize that unless you're Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby with an unlimited supply of roofies, like I often say, you can't kiss all the women. And, you know, it ended badly for them anyway. <laughs> So you're gonna to have to just let some stocks go. The, the beauty, it, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but I look at a couple thousand stocks every night. I'd looked at a couple thousand stocks earlier, so I'd be willing to bet. The problem is I, I don't look at each symbol every time I'm going through each one because I go so quick. But I'd be willing to bet that a lot of the stocks brought up tonight, I'll have an idea of, or I've heard of them before, provided they have a little volume and provided they're trending. So you got to realize that you can't kiss all the women, but the double-edged sword I was talking about is that in going through all these stocks, I see a lot of stocks that I missed, like huge moves, but that's okay. I look at those stocks and say, well, wait a minute, could I have gotten in, should I have gotten in? And that's where the deliberate practice thing comes into play that I talk about so often. And there's articles on the website and a lot more behind the members area or in the members area, I should say. Now, what I would encourage you to do is find you a setup or a couple of setups, but I'm going to show you just one here in a second. I think would be a great place to start, especially if you combine them with some of the uh, simpler setups, such as persistent pullbacks and TKOs and things like that. But you gain confidence by studying hundreds of historical examples of the chart, and then you watch them in real time. As I've said before, a buddy of mine's like, Hey, I'm checking out this new setup. Why did you, you call a new setup? He's like, I'm trading this. I'm like, well, why'd you get into that? He says, oh, I got this setup. Uh, this happens and this happens. I'm like, well, that's kind of neat. Uh, I never heard of it, though. And how long have you been trading? I said, oh, I just read about it a few minutes ago. I said, oh, God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, as far as mastering trading psychology, obviously, we could spend hours on this. And I spent hours and hours on this in the members area but there's a few things you can do that will really help you want to trade at a small nearly meaningless size excuse me and you have to realize that and this is a biggie and this is something i've been thinking about a lot lately your life is going to spill over and to your trading and your trading is going to spill over into your life. And this can be good things and this can be bad things. And sometimes the good things can create a bit of an ego problem. If your trading is going really well, you kind of start falling off the cliff a little bit. You'll start taking mediocre setups or maybe pressing a little too hard. And if you're not careful, you can end up fighting the last war should the market begin to roll over. One one of my problems that I've been doing a little writing about this lately, getting some thoughts down, is if I go out and travel the world, and I'll give you one example, I just went to San Francisco last fall, back before Los Mets started, obviously, did a speech, 
And the people there might not feel the same way, but I felt like I nailed it and did a good job. And the, and the feedback from my peers and a lot of the people in the audience, who, who's a fairly high level audience, I really respected as traders. They, they like what I had to say and they wanted to learn a little more. So I came home all full of myself and immediately lost a shit ton of money. Oh, there goes my monetization. <laughs> I don't care. On Monday, <laughs> the Monday when I got back, and that's happened throughout my life. I need to make a little note. Hey, there's another one of those problem things, okay? Another one of those. So Monday morning, note to self, when I get back from traveling the world, once this COVID crap blows over, I hope it blows over soon, <laughs> Monday morning, sit on your hands mostly unless you think you have the mother of all setups now so like i said earlier i'm going through a bit of a drawdown so that's kind of got it kind of has me bummed out earlier this year i went through kind of a bigger drawdown and i was like i'd go home really bummed out and instead of i think it was scott adams and his book and that's it's on i just so happened to have it on my desk from last week i didn't clean my desk how to fail and almost everything still went big. I think it was in here. If not, it's still a worthy read. I think it was in here though. And again, this is all on books to read. Anyway, he talks about how your discipline gets used up, okay? And your insert any type of positive emotion or, or positive behavior you want to accomplish and that gets used up. So when I was going through a bigger drawdown, earlier this year when the market was making one of its transitions or whatever and i was losing money on one side and starting making money a little bit on the other side but somewhere in between and maybe chasing a few little rabbits that i shouldn't have chased admittedly meaning too many positions on i was kind of bummed out and that was putting me in a bad mood i'd go home with that bad mood and i didn't have the patience if something would go wrong at home or if my wife would make a little quip at me or something i would i'd come right back you know and then i carried that back into my trading and as you can see that could become a vicious cycle so that's a very important thing to recognize and that's going to solve a lot of your psychological problems when it comes to trading is that your trading will spill over into your life and your life will spill over into your trading and both can end up in negative feedback loops if you're not careful and i've got enough problems in my life but you know believe me it's outside looking in is what i was talking about last week a lot of your hell in your own life is self-created and you could fix a lot of things by just simplifying some things and not creating hell for yourself i got one friend who was in a perfectly good home decides willy-nilly to sell his house buy a new house he's going to flip it but now he's torn the whole house apart and he's living in this <laughs> house and he had a perfectly good house before it's like okay it's like well you're creating your own mess for yourself you can't have that and not be frustrated if you know what you're going to do going in you know it's going to be a mess and you can live with that mess then do it but anyway it's it's easy to complicate your own life much easier to see other people's problems in their own lives i read something recently which I thought was kind of interesting. It said that if someone identifies a problem in your life, they're probably right. If they offer you a solution, the solution is probably wrong. So that's a little, a little tidbit to throw out. So anyway, and you know, I I, I don't want to go off on a tangent on your life. Like I said, I've got plenty of enough problems on my own, and my life is far from perfect. Perfect, but I can tell you this: if you if you exercise and and work on you a little bit, you're gonna be in a better mood for your trading and get proper sleep and don't eat or drink too much or whatever the case may be. And so you're not gonna be so tired the next day, then you're gonna be in a better mindset to approach your trading. And that goes, that's a whole another conversation right there, kind of more of a holistic thing outside of the holistic trader. But you get the idea, you have a fight with your spouse or significant other, or hopefully not both on the same day at the same time. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to, come in the office and trade. And, you know, sometimes you want to revenge trade a little bit. It's like, oh, I'll show her or him, you know, or if it's both, then you're a greedy bastard, but that's another conversation altogether. All right, so for the methodology, the gentleman earlier was saying, I'll just jump in midstream, so to speak. Well, the solution there is to have one. I know, well, I know, I know, easier said than done, right? 
but just have a methodology. And I would start with something really simple. And I often quote Linda Rasky on this, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And pick something that clicks with you, pick something that makes sense to you, pick something that's fairly easy to recognize. And if it's something like Landry Light pullbacks, you could, if you pick one that you really like, bring it up in the Facebook group and me and the other guys and girls will pick it apart or we might agree with you fully. So I would start off with something really, really simple. I've been having a lot of fun messing around with this Landry light lately and you can get it for free in Metastock. It's also in StockCharts ACP platform and that's what I've been really playing with around with it lately. And this is straight from the ACP platform. And I like it because it's easy to use there and you can scroll back and forth by dragging the chart back and forth. And it's just a neat little thing. And if we have time tonight or when we get to the, the Q&A section, when you start asking about individual stocks, we'll pull some up in the ACP and see if we can find a couple of these Landry Light pullbacks. So I think, if, I think for lack of something better, I think this is probably a good little pattern to trade if it's your first pattern of trading or as I've said quite often, years ago, I was friendly with a trader and he was kind of an old school guy, old school in that he's been around for a long, long time. And I was lucky to have hooked up with him. By the way, I guess that, that term means something new nowadays. It's like you know, my daughter's like, I'm going to meet Bob. You know, it's like, OK, you know, and the next day, hey, did you hook up with Bob? They're like, Dad, I'm like, what? Did I can't believe you asked me that. I'm like, well, what is that? You know, anyway. Long story endless, he he taught me a lot about trading. And then like all of us who trade, okay, we're all human here. And I'm gonna pick on the gurus here in just one second. So be patient. But like all of us who trade, we occasionally go into the drawdown and we occasionally have some bad behaviors or whatever. Well, this one particular gentleman would climb out of his hole by trading this one little thing. And you're like, well, hey, what's the one little thing? It no longer works. The, the conditions have changed the way the market's set up no longer works okay it's kind of like um what are those guys called the so's bandit you know bandits or whatever it, it's sort of along those lines just to kind of give you a hint as to what it was but i can assure you no longer works because if it did i would i would do it when i hit a drawdown anyway he would go back to this one little setup and that's all he would do until he gained his confidence back, until he got a few good trades under his belt. And then he saw some of his other patterns setting up and he couldn't stand and he'd go back and do that. So if you lost your way or you're brand new to trading, find you one little setup, one little pattern. And by the way, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? People all the time, you know, at least once a day, somebody's like, I got this idea. What if, what if I made this system and I did this and I did this and I did that? I'm like, okay. It, you know, put in these six oscillators and all this other stuff. It's like, okay, well, before you do that, why don't you look, and it doesn't have to be me, but obviously I'm biased. Why don't you look at something that I've already done, like the Landry like pullbacks, the bow ties, the persisted pullbacks, TKOs or something. TKOs are wonderful pattern to trade. Take a look at those things. And I've had a lot of success with these things. And more importantly, a lot of my peeps have had a lot of success with these things. In some cases, as I often joke, it's kind of like when you're a kid, it's like somebody steals your bike off your front porch, rides around the block, and when they come back around your house, they pop a wheelie in front of you. You know, it's like, <laughs> I got a text today, literally got a text today, I don't have my phone with me. It's like, oh, I do have my phone with me. Let me see what it says. I forgot to turn it off too. It, it, was, it was kind of like, you know, it's one of those, you know, I'm sitting here looking at my account, having a bad day. He's like, you know, I called my, uh, called my broker, and what did he say? I'm showing a profit of six thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars in a stock that I got stopped out of, and he's still in it. You know, so kudos to him for doing that. So, oops, and now he's attacked. Now he's ironically texting me. So let me turn this off. Anyway, I digressed obviously, but take the ball and run with it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now, this is the simplest pattern in Simple Town, at least from my perspective. And by the way, I wrote about, I called them daylight pullbacks in my third book. But Beaky's one of them, damn it. That is one of them that, God, oh, oh, oh. 
Thank you, John. You just iced the kicker. <laughs> B E K E. I, I, my, I can't believe I, you know, what did I say earlier? It's like people who should know better making mistakes. I bailed on that stock to get 1.4 points out of it. I think on my second loaf, and that was across multiple accounts. I'm embarrassed to say how much money I lost. But yeah, Binky's another one. That That is one. Oh, it's killing me. I saw it today and I started doing a middle math and I'm like, Dave, stop, stop, move on, learn from it. Hey, make that one of those procedure things where next time this happens and I go to micromanage myself out, I will say, hey, Dave, don't do that. You have a procedure in place for that. Anyway, yeah, the, it's I feel your pain. Yeah, John, you uh, John got knocked out too, huh? Oh gosh, darn it! <laughs> Golly, that's what I say in my office. Golly, <laughs> not true. I dropped f bonds. Where's my f bond tonight? Oh, it's over there. Here's my f bomb. I'm not gonna drop it because it, it weighs about a pound. <laughs> Yeah, no, it wasn't Beaky, but Beaky, Beaky is another one. And and I think he's still in Beaky too. Damn him. <laughs> no, I'm glad he's doing well. I'm glad he's doing well. So anyway, getting back to this, again, this was in actually my third book, uh, The Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks. I call them Dave Light Pullbacks or no, Daylight Pullbacks. Now I call them Landry Light Pullbacks. Same pattern, except in, in that book, I use a 20-day EMA. I was kind of fascinated with 20-day EMA. Long story endless, going back to 95, I was fascinated with the 20 day EMA, I did a lot of mechanical testing, a lot of programming back then. And I was using it in Forex, specifically Japanese yen, US dollar. And it was a simple little system. It's a 220 EMA breakout system. You get it on the internet probably for free now. It used to be $1.49 or something like that. Anyway, I kind of fell in love with that 20 day EMA. And lately, as I've been saying, a nausea, this year with a lot of these go go stocks running up nicely, like these COVID stocks, et cetera. Uh, electric car related stocks, electric cars that drive around killing coronavirus stocks, those type of stocks have been really in these accelerated trends and you really need to wait for a deeper pullback, a little bit deeper than that 20 day EMA. So it's a little tweak on the system or the setup, I should say, using the 30 EMA versus the 20. By the way, I do, I look at blank charts and after I look at a blank chart, and once I like a setup, I might throw in a EMA or something to see if it's actually a setup based on one of these things or to label it. But if you're newer to trading, I think it's okay to put a moving average in there and use something like the Landry Light, not an indicator, but an illustrator. I'm kind of digressing here. Anyway, let's define trends or a trend as at least 10 days of 30 day EMA. Now, I wouldn't rush out and trade anything mechanically. So you have a brain in your head, I'd suggest you use it. Like I said a few minutes ago, if you find one of these you like, bring them up in the weekend charts, bring them up in the Facebook group and let's noodle with it a little bit because they could be a case, and I think I showed one a while back where the market could be rolling over and then just kind of hitting that 30 EMA, maybe bouncing up to trigger you in and then keep rolling over. In other words, losing momentum so you want to eyeball it to make sure that the trend is accelerating and not decelerating and you want to use some trend qualifiers this goes back to the early books that i wrote early one or two books where we talked about wide range bars and the direction of the trend something like right here a wide range bar okay and gaps and laps in the direction of the trend there's no real gaps down in this particular trend here it's very persistent. You could draw a line through as many bars as possible. Go in and study the persistent pullbacks. Go in and take the methodology course and study the persistent pullbacks. And this is also a persistent pullback. This also has a little bit of TKO characteristics to it. You gotta have a tiny bit of a TKO move here within the pullback, okay? So that's what trend is. Again, don't just blindly take these mechanically. Make sure that it also looks good to you. And then the stock has to pull back and kiss that 30 day EMA. And that suggests that it has corrected. And then at this point, you apply the proper money and position management. I could boil that down into one little paragraph here. You wanna use a slightly liberal entry to help being triggered on noise alone. My first book, I said, hey, enter like a tick, or I think back then it was an eighth or a 16th. <laughs> Shows you how old I am, above the prior day's high 
Well, if you do that in today's market, you're going to get triggered on noise alone. So you have to give it a little bit of wiggle room. And I'll walk you through this particular example in one second. And then you want to make sure your stop is at a point based on the stock's volatility to allow for a potential swing trade move. A swing trade, ideally, within a week, you're taking profits. But sometimes, in this particular case, it took a few weeks. But make sure that stop is far enough away to ride out if there's any more correction and some sideways choppy type of trading just in case the market has to consolidate before taking off again. And once you figure out where that stop's gonna be, like I said earlier, you put the entry in, the stop in, and then the initial profit target where you take half of your profits is simply the entry plus the entry minus the stop. Well, the entry minus the stop is what? The risk on the trade. Add the risk to the entry, you got your IPT. All right, what does all that mean? Well. If you look at the indicator down below, that just counts the number of bars, not the magnitude or the distance. You could, you know, you, you might, maybe there's something in, in doing an indicator where you measure the distance of the lows away from the moving average, and that might be something fun to play with, okay? I, maybe I'll wake up tomorrow morning, do a little programming, and check that out. I know, you probably want to party with me, right? <laughs> Anyway, it just counts the number of days. So we're going to say trend is when you have more than 10 days, and then the setup is when you pull back to the moving average. So you see it's got a little bit of a pullback here, and notice that the Landry light goes to zero. Okay, it was a pretty high number in here, and this drops down to zero. Again, that's a 30 day EMA. So notice it makes a little kiss of the moving average. We put an entry way up here because we don't want to be triggered on noise alone, and then we have a stop down here. In this particular case, entry minus stop, broadcast that up, and that's your initial profit target. Now I'm gonna walk you through this one one more time toward the end of the presentation for another example. So we'll come back to that. The other problem that was submitted that I picked up on this week is how to grow a small account. And I don't know if that's the same, Jay, or not. Well, how do you grow a small account? I thought about this a lot before I came up with this answer. And I think it's the only true answer. There's some little caveats here and there, but you grow it the same way you would grow a large account. You want to have the best stock selection. Now, that BCLI trade we just looked at and we're going to come back to in a few minutes. Last week or week before, I talked about the must-take trade, a trade you see that you must take versus the mistake trade, okay? And sometimes you don't know until hindsight, provided you're willing to do the brutally honest introspection of the post-mortem, whether that trade was a mistake trade or not. And if it was a mistake trade, again, I'm kind of beat, I'm kind of coming back to this gentleman, but it's like, okay, it's another one of those. Don't do that again, okay? So there's, I spent 14 hours just talking about stock selection. So it's a little hard to teach it, obviously, in this format. But if you watch enough weekend charts, if you can't sleep at night and watch enough weekend charts, borrowing a line from Greg Morris about his stuff, he jokes, not mine, <laughs> but he could probably make the same joke. Don't operate heavy machinery afterwards. But you'll see through a lot of people asking about stocks, what stocks are good stocks based in my humble opinion by the way if it's your opinion you don't have to say it's your opinion but <laughs> in this case in my humble opinion what stocks are good stocks based on trend persistency acceleration and trend all these trend qualifiers and all that other stuff and the setup space on a nice little deep pullback enough to shock knock people out or shock people out tkos etc so and you get better at your stock selection, one way to do it for free is look at a lot of charts every day and look at the ones you missed and try to figure out if there was a way you could have caught that move, as I just said a few minutes ago. Money management, money management, and money management. You have to plan that trade and trade that plan. With money management, I often forget, usually when I talk about money management, I use the word money and position management because those two are kind of one and the same. So money and position management, that comes back to planning the trade and trading the plan. Well, if you map out your money management plan, all you have to do, like my wife, when it comes to fixing something, well, all you got to do is this. You know, oh, yeah, right. You know? <laughs> but if you plan that trade, all you have to do is follow 
that plan. As I say, ad nauseum, the stocks I take outside of the service, I'm like, hey, I like this setup. And uh, I think the entry would be around here. Eh, I'll risk about whatever. I kind of do it all on the fly. Uh, a thousand shares, you know, whatever the brokerage account I'm in defaults to. Yeah, that sounds good. Give me a thousand shares, you know. And then if it starts going against me, or even better, if it starts going with for me, sometimes I'll forget to take profits because I didn't plan out that complete trade. The trades that I do in the trading service, well, it's pretty damn easy, okay? There's one or two right now that have been going against me, going against me, and pissing me off. And I've been wanting to just get out of these damn things because they're pissing me off. But what have I done? Nothing. Why? Because they're in a trading service. Like the Beaky trade, we talked about that in Facebook. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to take this trade, right? Well, I micromanaged myself out of it because I didn't put a hard plan into place. Yes, I knew I was supposed to let it ride all the way back down to break even, but I decided I didn't feel like doing that, right? Like I said earlier, going through a drawdown, it's like, yeah, you know, if I let that lose another thousand bucks or whatever in this position, that's one more thousand dollars I have to make back. Well, reality <laughs> And a lot of times the thing you try to avoid, and this is a little bit kind of deep for tonight, but the thing you try to avoid, you create. Maybe we'll circle back to that at some point in time, but think about it. So I'm trying to avoid more losses. Well, I'm keeping myself in more losses because more losses in that particular case would have been right at the reversal point and I would have made a lot of money on the trade. Me and both John here. Yeah, John, good point. We'll come back to that in one second. So money management, money management, money management. And here's a biggie. Embrace your emotions. Now, use the word embrace, as I say, ad nauseum. And this line of reasoning comes from Denise Shaw and what's his name? Descartes. Uh, yeah, I think it's Descartes. And, or, the, what's, or is the book Descartes? I forget, but I think it's Descartes. Anyway, uh, some of her research comes from him. And uh, long story endless, uh, she spoke years ago in San Francisco. She put, spoke seven years prior to the San Francisco speech I was talking about that I gave. And uh, I really like what she talked about, how you can't make decisions without emotions. Okay, every decision has emotions. Like I've been saying, I know I say this ad nauseum, but like last week, a week prior, and week prior, I'm kind of like, you know, I had a bad day and I'm tired. I've been here all day and I'm talking for a couple of hours here, although I really enjoy this. Man, a beer would be nice after this, you know, or well, three. <laughs> but, you know, I got to get up. I get up at 4.55. It's like, that's going to be kind of hard to get up five hours later and then get in, front, get in front of the screens, plus run the business and everything else and be here for another 12 hours. So it's like, it sounds like a pretty simple decision. Hey, just have a beer day. But a lot of emotions go into that one little system, one little decision because of the repercussions that are involved. So what I would encourage you to do, and this is a biggie, and this has helped me a lot, not that I don't still screw up, I screw up plenty, and I try to show a few mistakes every now and then. If I showed you all the mistakes, you'd never listen to me. <laughs> but I showed a pretty big mistake last week. Well, it was the beaky trade, and I'm glad you guys won't let me forget that because you know what, I don't wanna make that same mistake again. But be cognizant of all of your emotions, okay? And realize how emotional every little decision is. I know I'm kind of crazy with this. This I keep giving this example of beer because by Thursday night, I want a beer, you know? And, but it's true that that one little decision, I have all these emotions tied up in it. So no matter what you're doing in, in making the decision, the what am I going to have for lunch? Embrace those emotions, okay? When it comes to trading, embrace the emotions that you're having in that trade. Now, my emotions, and I guess I'll just keep beating myself up on that beaky trade, <laughs> B-E-K-E -E is what I'm saying. It's a beaky is what I call it. But my emotions there were, okay, I'm just going to get out. I don't want to lose any more money. I, I had the, the pain of possibly losing more money, okay? And, you know, there's simple ways to avoid that. Turn off your screens, put in a hard stop. Okay, my I hit the initial profit target. My stop is break even. Let's put a hard stop in and take my wife to lunch, okay? Or go out to lunch or whatever. And 
that would have made me thousands of dollars. I'd have blown 50 bucks on lunch. Okay, so what? That's worth it because I'd have made thousands of dollars. Sometimes the solution is that simple. And again, maybe that procedure, maybe I little, need a little procedure book. What's her name? The, uh, the girl with a little flippy binder. <laughs> I need one of those flippy binders. Ah, I just had a revelation or an epiphany. Somebody write that down. So it's like, I need a little flippy binder, stick it over my trading station. And when I go to do something stupid, I just I pull the stupid tab, you know, or pull the mic. What is that micromanager? Flip, 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 you know. McEnany, huh? What's her name? She's no longer, she got kicked off of Twitter. <laughs> How to grow small accounts. Again, the same way you grow a large account, there are some caveats. And beware the 10K to a million YouTube gurus. Now, I saw somebody else criticizing these guys and, and maybe their line of reasoning comes from, from this as far as the 10K thing, but the, it's always 10K, right? Well, the reason it's 10K is because most people could scrape together $10,000 if you're a little bit older, obviously, if you're younger, like we have a few very young members, that might be a lot of money to them. But most older people could scrape together $10 million, $10,000, million, that'd be nice to scrape together. <laughs> But most older people can scrape together at least 10K or they could, they could worst case scenario, could borrow it on, on a credit card, you know? <laughs> and all these gurus, you know, 10K to a million. Well, the thing is, if, if, and it's a big if, if they really did that, could they rinse and repeat? Or is it a one trick pony? I had a good friend. He turned, as I often say in my speeches, when I when I actually get out of my office and do a speech, he turned five thousand dollars. I would later find was of somewhat questionable origin. I probably shouldn't say that, but I didn't know it at the time. Okay, <laughs> into roughly a million dollars. Unfortunately, he round tripped it. And as I often say when I tell most of the rest of the story, the rest of the, the complete rest of the story is a two drink minimum, and it. it it's just amazing where it goes. I don't want to tease you too much on that. But anyway, I remember seeing a letter from his brokerage when he was down about 900 or something thousand dollars. And they said, you obviously don't know what you're doing. They had a little, they, they put a little pamphlet in there on that little, that little CBOE pamphlet they give you when you first trade options. You need to read this pamphlet and we're going to shut your account down now. I'm like, wow, that paternalism would have been really nice when he was down maybe a half a million dollars, you know? And the whole situation was a mess. He's no longer with us. That's how I would talk about him. That's another two drinks story, two drink minimum story. For him, it was more than two drinks <laughs> is what killed him. Anyway, so let's let's say they did take 10K and turn it to a million. Well, is it repeatable, okay? Or was it a one trick pony? And here's the deal. If they could take 10K and turn it a million, well, how many... How many 10Ks are in a million? Can I do that math in my head? A thousand? There's a thousand 10Ks in a million. I think that math is correct. So they could have a thousand million dollars by turning those 10Ks into millions, which would be a thousand million would be a billion, right? I hope my math is okay. My calculator literally broke, so I need to go get another one. Now, the other thing that just kind of blows me away is, and I've seen more than one person say this, okay, and, you know, make 4% a day. Well, 4% a day, if you do the math, is nearly 200 million a year. Well, it's actually 188 million, but you get the idea. And a few months later, that 188 compounding at 4% a day, 252 trading days on average per year, is over a billion dollars. Now, if I could turn 10K into a million or make 4% a day and become a billionaire in 14 months. I mean, I love you guys and girls, but I'm pretty sure you'd never see my fat ass again. I'm half kidding. <laughs> I'm glad I got a laugh. I'm like, how's that going to go over? You know, what's funny is I was doing that Photoshopping on that thing. And then I went to the bathroom and I heard my wife come in my office and then walk out. It's like, so she walks into my office and there's me Photoshopping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, God knows what she sees when she comes in here. <laughs> now, 
one thing or two things to remember with a small account is you can't treat the money like it doesn't matter and you can't treat the money like it really does matter. If you really, really need the money, it's going to be more difficult. And on the flip side, you can't treat the money like it doesn't matter. So let's kind of unpack that a little bit. So you can't treat the money like it doesn't matter. Not caring will cause you to do all the things that you're not supposed to do. And I was messing around with a small account a while back and trying to do one of these parlay things. And I ended up with a lot of bad behaviors and, and I kind of put the brakes on that for a little while. And it's something that I might revisit, but a lot of dangerous behavior could happen. If you have a, a, a good trading account, a sizable trading account, and you, you're trying to mess around with a little one, you gotta really be careful because those old habits die hard. And I found myself doing a lot of those old good habits and then funneling into some bad habits. But before I digress too far, the not caring will cause you to do all the things that you're not supposed to do. You're taking excessive risk, mediocre setups, you'll find yourself gambling a little bit, not following the plan. And then here's the deal, in many cases, you don't have a plan to begin with. Now, a lot of times people with small accounts, that might be all the money they have, and that's a just as bad problem. You can't treat the money like it really does matter because in order to make money, you're going to have to put capital into harm's way. So you're not gonna be able to take the risk and you're gonna see a good setup, but you're like, oh, geez, I just can't take that risk. But what you're not seeing is the potential reward and let me beat myself up some more okay it's like i didn't feel like losing any more money on that beaky trade so what did i do i got out i have myself on the back i made a point and a half in this trade less than a week or three days whatever yay i'm so smart <laughs> anyway and if you do take the trade you're going to find yourself micro managing because you're either going to take a little profit because you don't want it to evaporate or you're going to take the inevitable small loss when as you'll learn if you've been trading for more than a day nearly all trades will go against you at some point so you won't be able to hold through that inevitable position drawdown and again you're going to take those small profits before they evaporate now here's the thing that kind of blows me away and i know one individual just think i'm picking on them but it's 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 not you but a, a lot of people have a lot of the same behaviors. If your money's tight, you need to learn so you can earn. Don't skimp on education. Now, I'm soft selling a little bit here, obviously, and everybody here is already a gold member, so I'm not selling to you. But if you're watching this and you make a lot of mistakes and you're putting your hard-earned money in the markets, become a gold member. It's $47 a month and complete all of the courses there, all the courses that are free with gold. And then stick around for a while and unlock lots of premium courses too, and then get into a little bit more type of trading. And then kind of ease it to the market. What amazes me is someone recently contacted me and she was making these mistakes that should not have been made. And I didn't go in and look, but I could actually see who's done what on the back end. If somebody ever calls me on that and I'm like, okay, let me go, let me go see. Like I heard some radio guy the other day talked about people complaining about politics or whatever and he goes check the voter records and see if they voted or not and he holds them to it like well you don't vote so you must not really care so i could go in and see whether or not you actually completed the course and i know she didn't because some of the mistakes i was seeing were just very rookie mistakes that she didn't even know she was making them and losing a ton of money now she was already a member so she just all she needs to do is go in take the courses, pass the pass, uh, pass the quizzes. And if she's still making the mistakes, then it's like, well, go in and retake the course. And then the other thing is come into the Facebook group, ask some questions. And I've been, I've been blown away by this group. Everybody's been so helpful. And usually by the time we get around to answer the question, three or four of you guys or girls have chimed in and I'll come in and say, yeah, what he said or what, what he said, plus also this too. So for the most part, a lot of questions will kind of answer automatically, which I'm very grateful for you people doing this. So you will have access to the Facebook group, et cetera. But the point I'm trying to make, make here is for $47, you can go in that first month and just bang those courses out if you feel so inclined. 
And that's a lot cheaper than making one little mistake in the market, putting in the wrong type of order and losing a few thousand dollars. It's like everybody's just so anxious to jump in. You would never do that in any other profession, would you? No, of course not. But for trading, people just do that. Now, suppose the question is how to grow a small account or die trying. And Dakota, I like what you have to say. We'll bring that in here. You could buy way out of the money lottery tickets on go-go momentum stocks, okay? And I was thinking earlier today, as I was putting a slide together, that might be fun to do, but that's a lot of bad behavior. Again, Dave, <laughs> but it would be kind of fun. I had this buddy of mine who made a billion bucks. I mean, I remember his first trade. He calls me up and he says, um, <laughs> he goes, I want this. I'm thinking the stock will go up. You want to buy a call or a put? I'm like, you buy a call. So hang up with him. And back then he had a voice broker. <laughs> and it got, Broker didn't know options. It was funny as hell. The phone rings like two minutes later. Do I want to open or close the position? I was like, you want to open the position. That was his first trade on this of many on this meteoric, meteoric, meteoric rise that he, he did. And what he was doing was buy way out of the money options. So if you were trying to parlay a small account or die trying, you could do that. It's bad behavior though, because what's going to happen is you're either gonna make a lot of money and then blow up, or you're either gonna blow up before you make a lot of money. The trick is do it, and if you don't blow up, stop when you make a lot of money. And then take that money and then be more disciplined with it and do something like the trend following moron stuff, trade those Landry light pullbacks and use some stops and risk only 2% of your account if stopped out in each trade and so on and so forth. Also over leverage your account, however you over leverage it through options, through excessive margin, et cetera. Well, leverage cuts, cuts both, or through like futures or something like that. Over leverage cuts both ways though, obviously, that you, you could have some huge gains, but you could also blow up pretty easy. One black swan move comes along and then you're out. And sometimes you could be out for more than you put up. That's one thing you have to remember too. Now, whenever, I say whenever, it's only happened a couple of times in my life, but a couple of times in my life, kids have come to me and said, and said, said hey, I've got a stock picking contest. Um, I wanna kick ass, what do I have to do? And I'll say, okay, this is what you're gonna do. You're just gonna buy, just to keep it simple. I, don't, I can't give them a setup and teach them money management and all the other stuff. They, they're not interested in all that. They just want to get out of the class and hopefully look smart. They want an A and they want to look smart in the process. Well, I'll just say, look, just buy stocks that are making brand new highs. And if you are if you want to know a little bit more, buy new highs on expansion of range. Now, of course, you're going to get your portfolios to be volatile as hell. But if you jump in midstream and just kind of hang on and you do that a few times, okay? And again, this is like, or die trying, okay? Let's not leave that part out, provided, of course, you don't get killed on several of these in the process you'll do really well you'll do a lot better than trying to catch bottoms most of the kids in the classes are buying you know of course i don't know what walmart's doing right now it's something i really don't trade because it's a big thick stock but they were buying the walmarts and all these other things that are just going down 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 and don't use money management okay just hang on now this gentleman earlier i'll have to look back to the trade because i got out here and he's still in way up here and just on that one half of a position, he's got $6,000 open. So I got to look at it and see, but I know I stopped out of it. Had I not used money management, I would still be in it. There's the, there's the dilemma. I need to look to see maybe if a little discretion would have helped. How can I get a little bit better? What can I learn from this? Did, was that bad behavior that, that got him that extra 6,000 bucks, okay? Or could I have used a little bit of discretion? So. And in, in this particular case, it's like I've been stopped out a lot of a lot of positions that he's still in. And that's because he's he's not bothering to put his stops in. And I'm here watching these things go against me. And then and like, well, got to put a stop in. I got to get out the way. OK, 
and even trying to use some discretion on some of these, getting banged out of them. And he's doing fantastic. Well, that'll work until it don't. So that's what I mean by don't use money management. Now, all of this is pretty obvious. You're taking excessive risk, okay? But just to say it flat out, take excessive risk. You could do something like the Kelly formula. And the Kelly formula, I don't, I, I don't have it exactly in my head, but basically if you had a system that's a certain percent correct, then there's a certain percent of your account, your risk on that. The problem is markets aren't normally distributed. You don't know what that percent correct is gonna be in real markets. So stepping on the gas is pretty dangerous. And I pick on Larry Williams and he picked on himself. So it's like, I'm just basically regurgitating what he said. Larry Williams did take $10,000 and did turn it into a million dollars in a trading competition one year trading S&P futures. And he was trading mostly opening gap reversal. That's probably where I got the idea for opening gap reversals. And then some other people early in my career like Cooper and Connors and people like that had those type of patterns, which I do have an affinity for that opening gap reversal type of thing. Anyway, long story endless, once again, he, at one point in the year, it was up over $2 million. So as Larry says in his speeches, Larry Williams, he says, if you ask me, that's the year I made a million dollars. If you ask his wife, his wife will say, that's the year that he lost a million dollars. So can't take anything away from what he did. It was an amazing feat. But let's say that, that losing a half a million dollars started let's say in the summer who's to say that that would have not dwindled down to zero by the end of the year okay so if you do get lucky and catch everything just right make sure at some point you have some sort of some, some sort of i guess a chair ready for lack of a better metaphor for when the music stops okay dakota says hi dave the market is, uh, nope, you had something else. Somebody said something, oh, it was John earlier. Let's see. John says, I think with a smaller account, I prefer less expensive stocks. I feel I can work my capital harder. Yeah, I agree with you there because you can, the percent the percentage move is much bigger and you're putting up a lot less capital. Like that Beaky trade, it's kind of like, you know, uh, was it 50 something? Like, let's just say $50 round number. So you're putting up $5,000 for 100 shares, you know? So a thousand shares is what, $50,000 you're putting up. Whereas if it's a $5 stock, a thousand shares is only what, $5,000. Yeah. So I, I hear you on that. And then this year has been, you know, this year has really rewarded a lot of bad behavior, like in the Robin Hood people, not to pick on them, but. I think when the tide turns a little bit, and I think it already has on some of these cheapy stocks, I think they're going to be a hurt and puff. Yeah, so uh, Zach is saying he accidentally put in a limit instead of a buy stop. Well, that's a very expensive lesson, okay? And I fat figured those orders too. And it's okay to fat finger something, you know, we're we're, we're human, right? But make sure you don't go in and put that in deliberately. Okay, we'll get to that, Dakota, in one second. Now, as I preach, these are from leftover from the last couple of weeks. The good news is you know what you're doing wrong, as I said earlier. Garbage in, garbage out. As I said throughout this presentation, practice, deliver, practice. What you want is usually not what is. Learn to live with that. Good luck. <laughs> Postmortems, as I also preach, are key. And the pre-mortem is pretty good too, okay? And that saves my buttocks quite often. It's kind of like, okay, if I take this trade and it doesn't work out, how am I going to feel? It's like, well, that's where you do the must-take trade versus the mistake trade. If I take it and say, this thing doesn't work out, boy, I'm going to really, really be mad, then maybe I shouldn't take that trade in the first place. So you kind of you need to do a little of that mind sculpting thing I talk about so often, every so often, such as um, Ian Robinson wrote about, Acrasia is a bitch, Acrasia is discounting your future self, and procrastination is is a goes kind of hand in hand with, with Acrasia, and, and in trading, it's like saying, ah, it's just a little bad behavior, what is gonna, what's gonna hurt, you know, maybe I could just sweep this loss on the rug, and before you know it, you kind of go down that spiral of bad behavior. Anyway, I've done complete, 
presentation today. Commit to commitment devices. So if you're thinking about getting out of a trade because it's getting close to your stop and you don't want to lose any more money, put in a hard stop and commit to taking your wife or significant other, just not both on the same day to the same restaurant <laughs> for lunch. Now, just in case you get hit by a beer truck, I get asked a lot of the same things. People, I remember one column I asked, my, I don't want to ask her anymore, but one time, one time I asked my wife, hey, can you read my column? See what you think, because I thought it was a pretty good call. And I'm like, what do you think? She goes, eh, you say a lot of the same shit. <laughs> you guys with big egos, if you want to get rid of that ego, get married, because <laughs> they will put you in your place. Anyway, so I'm like, you know, maybe I do say a lot of the same things. And then the next day, I got asked the same exact questions, and I see the same exact mistakes being made. Not that I'll make them, but same exact mistakes in like, questions on things and making mistakes you shouldn't be making. So that's why I beat the dead horse so much. And what's amazing is, and this is part of the reason the learning management system came to place is like one guy who I'm good friends with, been with me forever. And I said the same thing to him, I know a dozen times. And then one time he's like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. I'm like, it was all there. So I'm like, you know what? If I put that and these 10,000 other thoughts in my head that I keep repeating into my learning management system and I put it in a quiz and you pass that quiz before you move on, then I know that you at least read it and in some form, at least initially consumed it. Yeah, you guys wanna start asking about stocks, that's fine. So one of those, in case I get hit by a beer truck and forget to tell you, earnings are coming out, should I exit? Well, let's take a look at VCLI, our current little example. And again, this was the Landry Light pullback. You can see we had plenty of days, like 50 days or so, of upside Landry Light. Stock pulls back to its moving average. Entry up here, stop down here, initial profit target up here. And then it triggers, and what's it, what, it, what does it do? Not much, okay? And this has been my dead money report lately. And my dead money report is another one of these questions I ask, answer, no, D, the stock's gone sideways for three weeks. I thought you were a trend guy. I am a trend guy, but I also follow my, I'm also a follow my plan guy, except for the peaky trade. Gosh, darn it. Oh. <laughs> but you can see it did get up to the initial profit target. Okay, so what, what do we do when that happens? We bring our stop up to break even. And then look what happened. Well, today it got a, got a, it kind of imploded kind of a TKO-ish type of move, and that was based on earnings, okay? Well, why not get out before earnings? Well, because even if you knew they would have bad earnings, you don't know how the market is going to perceive those earnings, and real money is in longer-term trends. So, so far, knock on wood, we hadn't been stopped out on that one. Now, I wanted to go back earlier this year and just talk about the Chewy trade, and this is why this is not really the mother of all examples, but it's a good example of following the plan, sticking with a trade until stopped out. And we stayed with this stock for a long, long time. Well, I looked up the earnings earlier and there was earnings back here. So that's before we got in, but then there was earnings here. And then there was earnings right there. Now you could argue, well, you can anticipate those earnings and get out, you know. Well, who knows? I mean, you, we could have possibly not gotten stopped out. And then this thing is what, 10, 15 points higher up here. So the bottom line is, yes, the market is affected by news and earnings and things, but you can't trade off of that unless you're doing some sort of news reversal. Like I said last week, just we'll go through this real quick. One theme that I've been talking about a lot lately is everything works better with trend. If we just take 11, I'm sorry, 10 days of Landry Light and go long a market and 10 days of Landry Light and go short a market, zero money management, peak to trough, we're looking at a 14% gain, a 25% round number gain, and then a 25% up gain, and maybe counting, we'll see, just based on something that simple. Now, before you rush out and get too excited, and I'd probably make a lot more money if I said, oh yeah, it always works this great, yeah, knock yourself out. <laughs> you will have choppy periods where it might go 10 bars and then come back in and go 10 bars down and back and forth. I'm doing a little robot thing here. <laughs> Earlier, I was so aggravated. I'm like, how am I going to do a show tonight? He's like, well, once once the camera goes on, I'm, <laughs> gotta get a little... I'm such a ham. Uh, just real quick, this is a thank you. I, I did this in uh, the stock chart. So, so if you want to see the painstaking details, go take a look at that. 
So this is one I recommended a couple of days ago. It was you. Entry was up here. Protective stop was down here. First deep retracement IPO, one of my favorite patterns. Yeah, keep the stock picks coming. We're getting ready to get to the charts. It triggers, and within one day, it hits the initial profit target. So it's kind of like a thank you type of trade. And I was feeling pretty good and excited about that. Counting my money, my future money. Started boat shopping. <laughs> and then what happens? It implodes the next day. So it's kind of like an F you type of trade. Well, if you look at it in the portfolio, we didn't get quite 1%, but we got 850 per 100K on that. So that's better than the poke in the eye and scratch on the remainder. Now, the ultimate goal is that second loaf and hopefully BCLI and APG and RXT and on the short side, BJ and DPHC back to the long side, which has been kind of frustrating, as you would probably imagine. But anyway, I've got this little APG circled up here, that second loaf, that second half of the trade, that's what a real money is, okay? And I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully that'll work out to where that becomes a, a five-figure number instead of a four-figure number and makes all the difference in the world. As I often say, your results will be a little skewed. One or two big trades makes all the difference in the world. But I was kind of pissed off when I got stopped out with this. And so I went for a bike ride, finally got a little exercise. And while I'm bike riding, I'm thinking, okay, well, if you made $850 and it's 250 trading days in a year, and that was technically, you were only in the trade for one day, that's $214,000. I guess you could argue a day and a half or whatever. Let's just say two days. Well, that's still $104. And that's on top of anything that you did in addition to the trend trades. So just that one trade, if you could do one of those a day, that's 214%. And the other thing I was thinking about while I was out on my bike ride is that let's just say you get one of those a week, that's still $44,000 or 44% in addition to your trend trades on a 100K account. So it's better than the poke in the eye trade. And as I often say, when people get mad because they give up open profits and get stopped out at a profit or a scratch, but they make money overall, I just say, you know, you're right. You you're pissed off. I'm so sorry. Do me a favor. Just just send me that money and and forget about it. You know, keep enough out. Go get your little massage. Get yourself centered. Make yourself feel good. And you know, 20 something years of doing this, I, I, I check my PO every now and then. I check about once every two months now. That I don't live near where it is, but I've yet to receive a check. So if you are a gold member, it's like every time I do these presentations, I'll get like 10 requests. It's like, no, you have to be a gold member. It keeps the riffraff out. I'm half kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. <laughs> do become a member of the Facebook group. All right, let's open it up. Let's take a look at a few of the comments and questions. And then we'll start. I want to take a quick look at the market. I know I'm running a little late. Chief Orman really wound up tonight. Dakota says, hey, Dave, when the market is chopping sideways, hello, Dakota, even must-have setups fail more often. That That is true without reading the rest of your question. However, the example I often give is, and there's more than one example, I'm not just picking this one guy, but this has happened a lot of times throughout my career. I remember somebody emailed me and said, I'm taking a break from the trading service. I'm not giving up, but I'm taking a break because I don't see any potential setups in the foreseeable future, and neither did I. But there were two trades to my surprise that night. Cause here's the deal. If I didn't, and this is why I do one of the reasons, one of the selfish reasons I have an educational business is it forces me to do the research and getting paid to do the research is just freaking awesome. Okay. I, I mean, that excites me. Right. But like today, you know, like I said, I was kind of pissed off earlier today. I, I just had to deal with some accounting issues and just a bunch of crap and the market ones that come up or it, it seems to me, you know, life trading, trading, life market, whatever. It's if the market is doing well, it seems like everything else does fall in place a little bit better, but none of that fell into place today. So I'm in a bad mood. And had I not, or if I didn't have the trading service to do in that two hours of research or whatever it takes, however long it takes, I probably wouldn't have done my research tonight. I know myself, I've, I'm not, you know, I've, I'm, committing, I, I'm committing to a commitment device. My commitment device is every night I publish a service that takes about two hours to do at least. Anyway, so I, I kind of digress there. Uh, okay, when the market is shopping sideways, even must-have setups fail more often, more fake-outs, let's follow through. 
do you just get even pickier? Yes, you answered your own question. I was before I read your whole question. That's where that was going to be my answer. Thinking through the process, like yeah, just get pickier and pickier and pickier. You've been in the service for a long time. You'll see when the, you'll see me go into that mode where it's like I'm not really liking the setups. The market's getting a little choppy in here. Might be rolling over. That's when you might see me put in like one short and nothing else. And then you might not see me putting in anything for a while. Recently, that happened in the market. If you go back and look at the archives, obviously, I'll put the link up in the recording of this. You have them because you're on the service. Do you get even pickier? Yes. Yes. You get even pickier. Or how do you handle this? The, uh, you answer your own question. You just get pickier and pickier. And your mindset is going to be, you know, do that time travel thing and just say, okay, if I don't take this trade, how will I feel? And, and that's the must take trade. And that's why if you go in and watch last week or week before, when I covered that DCLI, I went back in the archives to see what I said, because I, I seem to remember that I really, really, really liked that trade. And if you look at, if you listen to what I said, I was like, hey, I really, really like this, or it's very, very, very good or something along those lines. So yeah, it has to be that it can't stand it, that F yeah feeling. You know what? I'm taking this trade. I don't care about the stinking market. Absolutely. I think I'm going to be upping my risk a little bit to work on my capital more. I haven't had any psychological. Oh, you said physiological pitfalls these recent months. Physiological pitfalls? I think you mean psychological pitfalls, Zach. Although there is a physiology and neurology when it comes to trading. Frenchie says, hope, there's no hope in trading. <laughs> there's no crying in baseball. Yeah, that's true. Uh, usually when I say the word hope, I, I catch myself. All right, Stuart says, for the TFM methodology, that's trend following moron, for you people who aren't familiar with it, when using a classic pattern of, say, two to seven days of continuous stepwise pullback after strong multi-week uptrend, is a similar pattern also worth trading as the pullback is somewhat disorganized and results in a multi-day range? Okay, that's a that's a good question. That's when kind of a bigger picture pattern develops, kind of like RXT right now. And that's why I was saying early in the, store, in the service, take a look at a two-day chart or a three-day chart when that occurs. Usually, I don't trade them. Occasionally, I make exceptions. I think the Chewy trade was one where you had a lot of days in a pullback, and I made that uh, exception. Yeah, Chewy's a little choppy, but it trends like crazy, you know? For example, I just bought JD, and it's... Similar to what I described. No, don't let me, let me forget to do my market analysis. Yeah, so what Stuart is saying, it's not a perfect setup because it's got a lot of days in the pullback. But yes, you are correct to quote uh, Ed McMahon in that it did kind of pull back quite a bit. Now, one thing that I've been noodling with a little bit, and I think you might be kind of backing into something here, is this is where that 30-day EMA type of pattern might actually work out because it took a long time to get down to its 30-day EMA. Even that BCLI, even though it was a TFM setup, even that BCLI, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It was 11, it was 12 days. And then a few more days to trigger, okay? So to answer your question, yes. You could be a little bit more lenient if it's a go-go stock, okay? And, and it's gotten really far ahead of itself in allowing that correction. So that's that's a little bit, yeah, that's okay to kind of bend the rules a little bit. All right, let me show, let's go through the charts real quick, the uh, market, and then we should have enough time left over to get to your stock picks. All right, let's take a look at the P's. Let's put the uh, bow tie moving averages in here. 10 is greater than 20, 20 is greater than 30. That's a good little indicator or illustrator to let you know that the market is okay. Little opening gap reversal today, not quite back to the plus column, but I consider today a victory overall with the exception of some sectors that got whacked, okay? Let's take a look at the comp and as that composite. Now, all of these indices are shy of their prior highs. So you know me, I like to see them get those prior highs and not look back. Kind of a nice clean opening gap reversal here, still down about a half a percent, but not a bad day, okay? If you think about where we started today and where we ended it, 
I don't want us to bounce off of this prior peak in here and roll back over. That would hint of a double top. For now, let's give the market the benefit of the doubts. Bowtie moving average is uptrend proper order. How much Landry light do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost 10 days of Landry light. Okay. So that's kind of interesting there. Let's take a look at the Rusty. Rusty's not looking too bad. Opening gap reversal there. Not bad at all. And ended in the plus column and just shy of multi month highs, not multi year highs, but multi month highs. But not too far away from all-time highs. Gold looks a little bit better than silver. Gold, the commodity, you can see it's back above its moving averages. Both have moving averages. If it stays above them, they'll cross back above, obviously. I'm sorry, that's gold stocks. Let's take a look at gold, the commodity. Gold, the commodity, not looking too bad. It looked toppy about a week ago. I was very concerned about it. It's back below a couple of its moving averages. So we'll have to see how it shakes out. Now, somebody's asking about silver. Let's go ahead and just cover that while we're here. I'm still bearish on silver. I'm bullish longer term, but I'm bearish shorter term on silver. And you can see that it got above its 10 today after the opening gap reversal, but just kind of, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to see that it's kind of rolled over in here. Bow ties are down, okay? So still looking pretty questionable as far as silver is Concern. Some areas got kind of whacked in here, a bit of a bummer. Biotech stalled short of its old highs, gap down, follow through from yesterday's sell. Hopefully, this is just a sell off. It's just a shakeout type of move. One day at a time, but we'll see. Okay. And health uh, drugs, same sort of disappointing action there. Wheels kind of came off the bus a little bit, began to implode. And let's take a look at health services. I need to hook that camera to something else. It's not touched. I got a stand up desk. I'm standing now, but it shakes a lot, doesn't it? Uh, health services actually looks pretty good. Dipped earlier in the day, recovered to close nicely. Kind of a pullback in here. It didn't pull back too far behind this, uh, below this recent high in here. So I consider that a victory. And most sectors are looking pretty good. I mean, there's some exceptions like energy, which has been doing horrible all year. I mean, look at that trade. Look at that trade. It's huge. Tiny hell was coming out of here, huh? But for the most part, especially things technology related, like the semis, look at the semis, almost back to the plus column today, looking pretty darn good. Found a little support right at their prior little peak in here. Both ties are pointed up. Looks pretty good, which gives me a nice segue. Carol wants to talk about SMH. Yeah, SMH looks good. Nice little opening gap reversal there for those keeping score. It's not bad. I wouldn't rush out and take a position there. I'd see if I could find something on an individual issue basis, but I hate to say I hate to say this. My wife's like, stop saying that. <laughs> Put a gun to my head. Yeah, I think it'd be worth a trade to new highs. Okay. Uh get in before the new highs and maybe stop yourself out if it takes out today's low. But I would rush, I would, as opposed to rushing out and trading this, I would look for an opportunity in an individual issue. Okay. Reggie. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I saw this one. This must be on the land, this Landry list. It should be, if not. I know I remember seeing this one earlier. It could use a tiny bit more pullback, okay? And maybe I'm being a little bit too much a perfectionist, but look at that nice little, look at it, look at it, look at that opening gap reversal. It's huge. It looks great, huh? Notice how it kind of took off in here and had that longer term consolidation like John was talking about earlier to the 30 EMA, took off from there. I mean, that's the that's the best. That's a pattern of 2020. You know, right when you figure out, like Linda Rasky said, right when you find a, a key to the market, they change the lock. But that's key to the market right now. That Landry Light 30 EMA setup. Go in and study every one from this year. You're going to be blown away. Blown away. Okay. Now, from this point forward, eh, who knows, right? We found a key to the market. They're going to change the lock. Yeah, this is pretty good. Like I said, it's it's almost textbook. It's, it looks so great. I like the acceleration higher. I like the persistency higher. This is accelerating momentum strategy. This is persistent pullbacks. And if it would just come down a little bit more and tag that 30, I would say, yeah, I'm all in on that one. But that looks pretty damn good. Now, it is considered energy. We got to figure out why it's defying gravity because we just looked at energy and energy is going straight down. So if it's a pure energy play, then we got to figure out why it's going up. 
Yeah, Donald, that is the stock that I recommended for today. And that was the mystery chart. And yesterday's, uh, what do we call that chart? Stock Charts TV, Trading Simplified Show. So I'm going to give you a high five on that one. I cannot tell everybody what it is out of respect for my peeps. But I will do this. Tomorrow, when I get this edited, if it triggers, I'll put it in here. Even if it just triggers by one penny, I'll go ahead and put it in and let everybody know what that one is. SLV shorts. Yeah, we talked about that, or, or did we not? Yeah, this is it's kind of got a lot of days of the pullback. It's a more efficient market. So I would maybe find a, a, a silver stock, but I would tread lightly. I'm not excited about being short silver. I know you got to do the hard thing, Dave. You got to do the hard thing, but I'm not excited about being short silver going into an election. GME trigger today. Yeah, I saw that one. Pretty interesting, but it's um, there was really no setup for me there, except hey, look, look at it, look at that ledger light pullback back here. That's huge, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back to <laughs> if I can go back to the beginning of 2020, I'm just gonna trade Landry light pullbacks for the whole year. Yeah, I was looking at um, BYND. I was looking at that earlier. Is it pull back deep enough? No, I don't think it is. No, no, let it pull back a little bit. I don't, I don't think I'd sit around and wait for it to come all the way back down to the 30. But yeah, I was looking at this early. I'm like, stupid stock. You know, it's like every now and then I'll pick up one of them freezer burnt patties in the store. I'm like, I'm gonna try this. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna go to that 80% ground meat right there, <laughs> which is right next to it. <laughs> Remember y'all, y'all remember that run on meat earlier this year? It's like you go to grocery stores, like all that veggie stuff was still there. All the meat was like gone. It's like, oh man. I've never had it. Has anybody in here had it? Is it any good? Can't imagine. This looks pretty good. I seem to remember this stock tonight in my analysis. It needs a little bit more pullback. Man, that's beautiful though. Who said that, Stuart? Give you a high five on that one for sure. You, I, I have to say, your, your stock picking, you and everybody else in here, is uh, has gotten so much better, and I'm blown away by it. Yeah, this is also in the Landry list tonight. I shouldn't even be talking about it because it's in the Landry list. My only concern is it was less than 100,000 shares of volume tonight. If you're watching this later than, let's say, Monday, whenever Monday is, 10:19 or whatever. Then uh, I'll put the I'll update the archive so you can see what I said about this stock there. But yeah, first deep retracement looks fantastic. Watch the spread and watch the volume. As John says, it could end up being a Hotel California. I have to say that IPO in the service looks fantastic. Yeah, that's one of the IPOs. There's actually a couple in the service lately. Reggie, talk about that one. Yeah, we just talked about that one. SWAV, is that going to be a solar stock? No, it's medical. This looks pretty good. A little lower in volatility, but that's okay based on the run it's made. It's had a pretty good run. I would prefer to find something a little earlier in the trend, but it's okay. And because of the volatility, it didn't have to pull back as, as deeply. Excuse me, getting hungry. <laughs> But yeah, that looks okay. I mean, that's fine. IMTX is a bow tie. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that's in the service or not. I might have taken it out because it's a little thin. But yeah, that looks fantastic. I'd like to see a little bit more pullback, but in a case like this with a bow tie and an IPO, yeah, it looks great. Uh, high five on that one. I, I know I saw this one earlier. I might have, I don't know if I put it in the service or not in the laundry list, but it looks good. Uh, watch your volume. I mean, the volume was nothing today, right? So watch your volume, watch your spread, and let's pray that it doesn't turn into a Hotel California. Yeah, WWR, that's been crazy. I think it's been in a Landry list, but it's just been so whack. I mean, just, you know, like, who was I? Uh, oh, it was you, David. I was giving you a hard time. I was like, you got to have big ones for that. By big ones, I mean accounts. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, but 232% HV. Tread, tread tread lightly, okay, on that one. Be careful. But yeah, pretty uh, pretty impressive run followed by a pullback. Didn't even make it to the 30. How crazy is that? Uh, that one I like, Donald, but you're also on the Landry list. It's the one that starts with L. 
And the one that starts with R is also a Landry list. And the one that starts with A is also in the Landry list. I promise I'll put the Landry list in this presentation if uh, if we get triggers on those. And then PRLD, I seem to remember too. But yeah, good job, Donald. Are you on? I forget if you're on the service or not. I get everybody mixed up. Uh, yeah, we talked about this one already. It was a little pin today. Also on the Landry list tonight. Donald, you nailed that Landry list. Good job. All right, well, I am out of time, so I need to go ahead and wrap things up. As usual, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking it on. I need business goes. We set another record tonight, so thank you for coming. I appreciate that. And everybody have a great weekend. If we don't talk again, great class, David. Thank you, David. You're welcome. You're welcome, Stuart. Everybody have a great weekend. Again, if we don't talk again, and I'll see most of you guys and girls, I think, tomorrow in the Facebook group. And everybody else, hopefully see you again next week. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great night and a great weekend. Thank you so much.